Well, flags at the White House and on Capitol Hill in Washington in the U.S. have been lowered to half-staff following the death of Congressman John Lewis, an icon of the civil rights movement, one of America's heroes. He passed away on Friday at the age of 80 after announcing in December that he had stage 4 pancreatic cancer. The news was confirmed by House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi described the former congressman as a titan of the civil rights movement whose goodness faith and bravery transformed the nation uh, with his determination in the fight against discrimination, his moral leadership, she says, uh, brought to Congress uh, for more than 30 years as a representative from Atlanta, Georgia. Along with Martin Luther King Jr., he was an organizer of the March on Washington in 1963, regarded as a seminal moment that led to voting rights for black people in 1965. He was arrested, beaten and jailed for challenging Jim Crow laws and became a national figure more than 50 years ago. Former President Barack Obama, who awarded Lewis the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2011, called him exceptional and a man who will continue, even in passing, to serve as a beacon in the journey towards a more perfect union. Well, let's continue to remember the civil rights icon in the state, John Lewis, and in the U.S. today, former President Barack Obama honored Lewis, saying he stood on the shoulders of this icon. He said that he told Lewis at his inauguration he was only there because of the sacrifices that Lewis had made. Lewis was a long-standing member of Congress. He advocated for a good trouble for more than 30 years while serving in the House of Representatives for his Atlanta area district. He earned bipartisan respect and we're seeing that in the tributes coming through, some calling him the conscience of a Congress. Well, to discuss, we're now joined by former U.S. Ambassador to South Africa, uh, Patrick Gaspard. Uh, Mr. Gaspard, uh, thank you for being with us. So we miss you here in, in South Africa. Uh, let's start with your personal uh, tribute to John Lewis. Well, thank you for having me. I miss all South Africans terribly. And let me first begin by expressing my condolences to South Africa for the recent loss of Ambassador Zinzi Mandela, who was a hero uh, in her own right. So, John Lewis, where do I even begin? John, John Lewis not only was uh, an icon uh, to me and to the world, but he was a personal friend. He was a mentor. He was someone who I had the good graces, to, the privilege, the blessing to have known for several decades, first as a young activist when I cut my teeth in anti-apartheid work, uh, and then some as an organizer uh, on behalf of the working poor, uh, and eventually uh, when I joined uh, formal politics. In every step of that journey, uh, John Lewis put his kind and gentle hand on my shoulder, steered me right, uh, and helped my entire generation understand that we were drawing from a well that he and others before him dug for us and that we had a responsibility uh, to take up uh, that blessing, uh, that privilege, with a tremendous amount of grace. John Lewis, it's, it's, it's hard to put him in proper context when you consider all uh, that he literally bridged, from being the youngest speaker at the March on Washington uh, to somebody who you know, grew up picking cotton as a sharecropper's son. He went from picking cotton to using those very same hands to pick the first black president uh, of the United States of America, an extraordinary arc. So, so let's talk about Obama and what he said at the inaugura inauguration. Um, John Lewis was there beside him. He told him that he was only a president because of the sacrifices he had made. I, I, I mean, describe for us in, in South Africa those sacrifices, how, how difficult it was in the 60s to, to push back and, and call for justice. Yeah, when, when you consider that, that between the years 1960 to 1966, John Lewis was arrested 40 times. And we're not talking about taking a gentle civil disobedience arrest. These were violent arrests. You had police who would wrap their batons with barbed wire. He was knocked unconscious several times. He had cigarettes from police put out uh, on his body. He was one of the original 13 Freedom Riders who had their buses gutted, who were dragged out, beaten bloody uh, in the streets. Uh, John Lewis often told us young organizers that there were multiple times when he was absolutely convinced that he would die, that he would lose his life. But he still marched on with a kind of resolve that uh, was possible only because he understood that in order to make history right, 
you had to take up an, a powerful faith uh, and a powerful hope uh, in your present moment. When John Lewis spoke at the March on Washington in 1963 as that youngest speaker, <coughs> his remarks were censored by Dr. King and the older generation of activists who worried that John Lewis would turn off the Kennedy administration, he would turn off <coughs> white supporters for social justice. Uh, but John Lewis was determined anyway that he was going to speak his truth then, and he did so right up until his final breath when he participated in the Black Lives Matter uh, demonstration uh, this uh, June uh, in Washington, D.C. <coughs> when, when Obama was inaugurated, I, I remember the hope. It, it seemed like the United States and the whole world had changed. Uh, but John Lewis lived to see a, a very different president come in, a, a backlash of sorts. Did he think it was a regression the, the last few years? <coughs> You know, I, I had that conversation several times with uh, Congressman Lewis, and if you asked him whether or not we had made any, made any real change, he would give you this kind of uh, quiet smile, uh, and then he would respond in a way that made it clear that he understood the ways that he and others imposed their will uh, on the arc of the moral universe and made it bend ever so slightly more towards justice. But he was also really clear that we had a long journey ahead of us. I hate to focus on the current occupant in the White House during uh, this moment when all of us uh, should uh, elevate beyond these kind of uh, petty matters. It's more important to say that John Lewis never was fooled uh, and was never naive about um, the, uh, the America uh, that, that he situated his activism in. He was somebody who was proud uh, of his citizenship he loved uh, his country, but he understood that in order to be a right and proper citizen, he had to push his country uh, toward to live up to its ideals. We often, in, in our uh, youth, when we're in school, we're taught about the founding fathers of America. Well, you know, those founding fathers did not, they had an idea of democracy, but they were not the founders of democracy in America. John Lewis, Reverend C.T. Vivian, who passed away recently, and others of uh, their cohort. Those were the founders of the American uh, democracy, uh, and those in my generation and the generation that comes after mine will continue to draw uh, on uh, those lessons and on those examples. And just looking at his recent activity, he, he did ask how many young black men will be murdered. But I understand he was also proud of, of the activism he saw of, of people coming out, uh, those Black Lives Matter uh, matters, uh, protesters. You know, just, just tell us more about that. Did he see hope in there? He did. It, it, <clears throat> sorry, it's hard not to get emotional thinking about the final part of his journey. But um, right up uh, till the end, in the most recent conversation that I had with him, he had uh, the sense of pride that you described. He had um, uh, his eye on the North Star uh, of progress uh, and just knew that the young people who were out in the streets today, not just in the United States, but the young people who were out in the streets uh, in Cape Town in front of the U.S. consulate there or in uh, Pretoria for the U.S. embassy, he knew that those young people would light uh, a new path and blaze a new course for justice. I want to say, if I can, just a word about uh, John Lewis and South Africa. We should understand that John Lewis always centered the plight of South Africans in his activism. In 1966, John Lewis, as a young leader of, the, uh, of SNCC, went and occupied the South African uh, embassy. 1966 had to be arrested, and it took Harry Belafonte to go and bail him out of jail. Uh, Harry, uh, John Lewis also picked up the, the broader struggle of independence uh, in Africa. When he spoke in Washington, he said, our, uh, the cry in Africa is for one person, one vote, picking up the cry from Zambia. He said, let that be our cry in America today. So for him, those two things were always joined together. I was enormously proud in 2016 when uh, at the observation of the 50th anniversary of Robert Kennedy's historic trip to South Africa, uh, John Lewis came uh, and he joined me and I was able to organize a reunion between him uh, and Archbishop Tutu. And in that moment, John Lewis talked about 
the degradation that he had seen in South Africa decades before when he came to fight uh, with the black uh, majority in South Africa and could not believe the progress that he had seen and the way black and white South Africans uh, were coming together to build a more uh, perfect republic there uh, and how that mirrored his, his own journey uh, in the U.S. So, yes, always that pride in the next generation and always a hopeful determination uh, that we would act together uh, to take up um, uh, our ideals. Thank you for making that link uh, to South Africa. We, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, in South Africa, uh, discrimination was was legal for so much longer than in other parts of the world. But what we've seen of late, uh, all over the world, sort of more about exposing what's in people's hearts and, and minds. Um, wh what do you think his message uh, is, is for us to remember here in South Africa and in the United States? Well, you know... There's a message that uh, he always gave to young activists in this country, young activists who he encountered all over the world. I, I remember he gave a similar message to my young son when he had a conversation with my, with my little boy. He'd always say, remember that we have an obligation never to stoop as low as the, as the enemies of freedom, the enemies of justice, the enemies of democracy. Uh, and that we had to hold ourselves with a grace uh, and a dignity uh, that would uh, push back against their brutality uh, and their violence. And at the end, th at the very end, that love would win out. Uh, he carried that example to his uh, very end. Uh, and now it's on us to pick up that baton. Thank you for your tribute uh, tonight, for being with us, former U.S. Ambassador to South Africa, Patrick Gaspard.